Tonight, the city of Greeley is obviously growing, and that spells good news not only for the economy, but also for your job search. And the Monfort College of Business partnered with the Alumni Association to help graduating students get those jobs. This is Bear News. Thank you for tuning to Bear News. I'm Zoe Campbell. And I'm Ben Shumate, filling in this week for Tanner Schwint. The 2019 Student Senate elections are coming, and to prepare, its current members are making changes to the election code. Student Senate Election Commissioner Tammy Ortiz worked with other members last week to update the official rules and guidelines for the voting process. These changes include removing unneeded technicalities, revising polling locations, and allowing candidates to use the UNC logo in their campaigns. The Senate discussed announcing how many individuals have voted on each day of the election period in order to increase voter turnout. But they want, to all, they want all student names anonymous. In other business, college Senator Katie Haynes also said Dean of Students Gar Garner Tucker is revising the university's decreased student protocol and invited other student members to be a part of the process as well. The Senate holds its next meeting on March 6th and you're welcome to attend. Now, students looking to be more involved on campus can run for Student Senate for the coming school year. This month, students interested in running for office attended an information meeting at the Office of Student Life. Students collected their election packets and, at the beginning of the month, candidates need at least 50 signatures from students and two signatures from faculty to qualify for the elections. These packets are due March 1st and the Senate will announce all eligible candidates on the 6th. The, pres the Student Senate election begins online on April 2nd, and students at UNC can vote for who they want to represent them. Anyone interested in running for a Student Senate can contact the Office of Student Life to get more information. It's not too late, but you'd better hurry. If you were at the UC last week, you might have noticed students wearing purple pins and wondered where they came from. Well, the Cesar Savez Cultural Center volunteers joined at the UC to advocate for DREAMers. They set up a table with information about how to support DREAMers and information about upcoming events. Volunteers made pins for bystanders to wear. And to add a little fun to the event, they raffled off a blanket. All you had to do was fill out a card with a description of how you support DREAMers at UNC. February is DREAMer Awareness Month at UNC, so be sure to visit the Cesar Chavez homepage for upcoming events. Greeley is growing, and that is cause for celebration. Recently, the Milliken Institute ranked Greeley second in the U.S. for job growth. Bear News reporter Alex Exted to, talked to Greeley's Economic Health and Housing Director about this achievement and where Greeley's economy is headed. In a recent ranking by the Milliken Institute, Greeley received high praise in many categories, including placing 42nd overall among best performing large cities. I'm never one to get super excited about a single ranking. I tend to look at a blended average of a bunch of different rankings to get a score. And Greeley has done really well over the last, last few years. Even though he has only been here for about three months, Benjamin Snow says he is already excited for the future of Greeley. This area, as fast as it has grown, it is still poised for even more tremendous growth over the next 20 years. Snow says the best performing industries in Greeley are the ones that have been strong from the start, like agriculture as well as oil and gas extraction. Even though all this helps the Greeley economy, Snow is most impressed by Greeley's high job growth ranking. In theory, you could have a lot of population growth, but 100% of that growth could be commuters. And so they could be going to Denver, going to I-25 every day. So I like the job number because that means there's more local jobs being created here which means it's going to cut down on the traffic on the roadways because people can come live in Greeley and also work in Greeley. And so I'm most proud and excited about the job number more so than just the straight population growth. As far as the future of Greeley's economy goes, Snow says the people and employment opportunities are coming. I think Greeley has a, a tremendous heart. The people in Greeley have been... Um, they're, they're proud. They're proud of, to be in Greeley. It's one of those uh, communities that um, is proud of itself. And I like that because if, as you envision what the next version of ourself looks like, I think it starts with the people you already have here. Well, with all this positive economic news, maybe Greeley can add even more new stores and amenities for its UNC students and other residents, I guess. Did you know that UNC shows their appreciation for student employees? Student Employee of the Year nominations are now being accepted. 
Who can be nominated? Well, all student employees working on or off campus as a student, non-work study or work study employee are eligible for nomination. Supervisors are encouraged to nominate outstanding employees and nominations are open until 11.59 p.m. on Thursday, April 4th. The nominees will be recognized at the annual SEOTY celebration. The recognition event will take place during National Student Employee Appreciation Week, which is April 14th to 20th. The university, the university plans to treat all student employees to a full week of recognition and appreciation events during that time. For more information, contact Student Employment at 970-351-2628. Picking a university is stressful for any high school senior, but Destination UNC helps put future bears at ease. Destination UNC is an all-day event for admitted high school seniors to learn more about the university. President Andy Feinstein spoke about the personalized approach UNC takes to each bear's education. And you can't be a bear without claws. Who stole the show and made some new friends throughout the day? A panel of student ambassadors from each college also answered questions about on-campus jobs, clubs, and if freshmen should consider bringing their own car to campus. College presentations exploring different academic programs on campus help potential bears become more familiar with degree options. Campus tours and a taste of the UNC dining halls were also a part of the itinerary. Students ready to take the plunge went to the confirm zone where admission staff were ready to assist. The next destination UNC is March 22nd with another on April 19th. And for those who already joined the Bear family this week, welcome. Awesome, yep. What made you decide you wanted to come to UNC, Zoe? Uh, well, I wanted a change of pace. You know, I'm from California and this was a nice, nice change of where I'm used to. So. So, so I think it was a good choice for me. How about you? It was cheaper. <laughs> On the other side of this break, we're going to make you hungry with some soul food. That event and others are a part of Black Heritage Month, which continues for the Marcus Garvey Cultural Center. Stay tuned to see what events took place this week. Hey, I'm Anderson Cooper. As a parent, you want to make sure that your child knows how to deal with bullying when they see it happening. And chances are they want to help, but they don't really know how. I'll teach them that the best thing to do is calmly walk away, find a teacher or other yeah. adult, and speak up. And do your part. Be that adult they can talk to and trust will listen. Join me to help stop bullying. Go to stopbullying.gov to find out more. You sure you don't want some? It's chamomile. Listen, you are extremely terrifying. Just the scariest undead subhuman thing on TV. and. I really mean that. <laughs> but I am worried that you could give my kids nightmares if they see you, so I'm going to have to block you. <sighs> so that's it. Oh, and, and tell the zombies they're, they're blocked too. Have you ever heard the phrase, food made with love? Well, students learn the true meaning of that phrase at Soul Food Night. Bear News reporter Renee Ortiz dishes out the story. Bear News reporter Renee Ortiz here, and I'm reporting from the Marcus Garvey Cultural Center. It's Soul Food Night, and people are here for the food, so we'll get you in line, and let's go. <laughs> Students and staff joined together for a night of food and a night of community. Everyone lined up for a hot plate of food made with love by Marcus Garvey Cultural Center volunteers. Food options included barbecue chicken, brisket, mashed potatoes, collard greens, and of course, big old scoops of mac and cheese. Friends ate, joked, and laughed where the smell of delicious food filled the air. Mina Jackson, a cultural activities coordinator at the Garvey, explained what soul food meant to her. To me, soul food means, it means home. It means comfort food, it's like food that your grandmother or your mother cooks for you on like a cold day or when it's like a bad day, or food that you eat with family. That's soul food to me. As this event is one of the Garvey's most popular, volunteers have been working for months to make sure this event goes on. It's been months, and we plan these with all of our other Black Heritage Month events, but this one, like, the budget had to be made months ago, the shopping was done, like, the shopping list was done months ago, so it takes months and months to make an event like this happen. As the night went on, people left the Garvey full and happy, which, from what I've learned, is one of the biggest goals of serving and eating soul food. Reporting from the Mark Mix Garvey Cultural Center, I'm Renee Ortiz reporting for Bear News. Oh boy, do I love food, and what would I give for a plate of that chicken and mac and cheese? Bear News continues to follow events in support of Black Heritage Month, so be sure to tune in for more next week. 
As part of the Black Heritage Month celebration, the Marcus Garvey Cultural Center hosted a forum with a panel of students talking about their black identity. Bear News reporter Betty Casa describes how students view themselves and who they are. Um, my name is Marcy. I am a cultural activities coordinator at the Marcus Garvey Cultural Center as well as the Sister Jones Cultural Center. I am a For Black History Month, the Marcus Garvey Cultural Center hosts an event in collaboration with Black Students Union and African Students United, where students sat on a panel answering questions about their racial identity. As the panel was asked, how do they racially identify? Freshman Katelia Ofsendero tells us. So I don't like it. It's just an uncomfortable question for me because when I was younger, I was like, oh, I mix, and then what do you mix with? Nigerian and Spanish. Oh, you're Nigerian? Are you sure? Like, you don't look Nigerian. I'm like, Students on the panel also talked about what made them determine their identity and how society had an influence on their racial identification. It's just like, now I'm starting to like accept it as more of a question of like, okay, people actually just want to know you. Like, people want to, they're not saying it out of ignorance, they're not saying it to be like, um, to be annoying, they're not, they're just actually, they're curious to know who I am, who Toby is. Reporting from the University Center, I'm Beatty Casa, Bear News. And this event is just one of many, so be sure to stop by the Garvey or visit their website to find out more about Black Heritage Month celebration activities. UNC's Monfort College of Business and Alumni Association are helping students find their success after they leave the university. The two organizations collaborated on the Women in Business Alumni Panel Monday to give current UNC students professional advice and networking opportunities. The panel included alumni working with the Global Task Network, Peak to Peak Business Consulting, and the Greeley Area Chamber of Commerce. The panelists discussed the struggles they faced because of their gender and stressed the importance of uh, building relationships and taking risks. You can find more information about career connections on the Alumni Association's website. A full day of video games might sound like a dream to some, me included, but the UNC eSports team turned it into both a reality and a fundraiser this past weekend. The den at Harrison Hall was buzzing as groups of students came to show their skills at this fun but highly competitive event. All the money from the fundraiser went to the Children's Hospital of Colorado. The 24-hour gaming marathon kicked off Friday evening and came to a close Saturday with the tournaments packed in between League of Legends, Rocket, or League of Legends, Rocket League, and Smash Bros. highlighted the marathon. But a newcomer game called Apex Legend stole the show as excited students explored the new victory royale together. The fundraiser was a success too. The UNC eSports team will donate $700 to Children's Hospital of Colorado. The Chara tribe faces poverty and discrimination in India, often forced into thievery and targets of police brutality. To fight back, the Chahara people created a theater group which performs across India to share their struggles through art. Members of the theater group called Budhan Theater shared their stories with UNC last week as part of the Reclaiming Heritage Project. The British made the nomadic tribes illegal during their occupation of India, and that included the Chahara tribe. While no longer illegal, the reputation of these once nomadic people means they are often unjustly accused of crime. The group shared a documentary titled Please Don't Beat Me, Sir, about the issues that face theater groups uh, and the theater group's efforts to change this image. After the documentary, a few members of Bhutan Theater held a discussion with the crowd. They shared tales of discrimination and their progress in their country. Later this year, members of UNC will visit India as part of this heritage program to share their own stories. As she does every week, Renee Ortiz will be live in the studio to give us her health tip of the week. And we ask you some of our questions on current events from the past few weeks. See you after this. Kids will spend eight minutes decorating their little brother. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. With long days in classes and late nights doing homework, students sometimes need a little reminder to be healthy. So, for that little reminder, Bear News reporter Renee Ortiz joins us to give her health tip of the week. Thanks, Zoe. As we get closer and closer to midterms, students tend to focus so much on their classes that they forget to focus on themselves. 
With that in mind, my health tip for the week is this. Eat a proper diet. Now, it can be hard to eat healthy with all the fast food and junk food available, but here are a few steps you can take to help you eat better. First of all, you have to eat breakfast. You've heard breakfast is the most important meal of the day, and that couldn't be truer. Eating breakfast helps prevent overeating throughout the day, so even if it's a banana or a granola bar, make sure you have something in your stomach in the morning. You can also make the push towards more healthy alternatives to junk food. Instead of chips and soda, try dried fruit and tea. Having pizza with your roommates? Get lots of veggies on a whole wheat crust. Cutting fried food out of your diet lowers your chances of developing heart disease immensely. And if you get hungry during the day, bring healthy snacks like cheese and nuts to snack on. To be healthy and happy, you need to put good food in your body. So be a good bear and eat a pear. Back to you, Zoe. Thanks, Renee. It's absolutely important that you make sure you're fueling your body with the proper essentials to make sure you get through your day. So thanks, Renee. Join us next week for more health tips so you can stay healthy. You might have seen Atlanta-based rapper 21 Savage in the news recently after immigration and custom enforcement officers arrested him. Turns out Savage is from England and he overstayed his visa for about 10 years. So Bear News reporter, reporter Alex Exted went on campus to ask UNC students about their thoughts about immigration and the rapper's dilemma in this week's Question of the Week. This week, I'm asking students if 21 Savage's recent deportation issues have changed their perceptions on immigration. I don't know if it really does a whole lot. I think the whole issue is kind of silly, seeing that he's been here for so long and he's a millionaire and he's kind of accepted in American culture. I don't think there's really an issue with him being here. I guess it has, because he has been in the U.S. for a really long time. For him to be randomly deported out of nowhere is crazy to me. I think the rules should apply to everybody, including him, even though he's could probably pay his, his way out of it. it should, the law should still apply to him. You know, if he overstayed his visa, he did. If he, I mean, people do it all the time. It's not like a huge crime, I don't think. I feel like America is very, very, how do I say it? Like, with, within immigration ties, they, they send back people who are, who are very innocent, who have been brought over here as children, who, have, who, have, who haven't done it on their own. So I feel like that's very, very cruel and brutal. And also, I feel like within the, the deportation of 21 Savage, I feel like that's just another way for America to keep the black man down. I think the U.S. government's doing the right thing. I mean, his visa expired, so I think him getting deported is the right move. I thought it was extremely funny like that he was in the country. Not that the fact that he got deported, but the fact that he was in the country for more than a decade like without his visa. I thought that was like extremely hilarious, but I'm... To answer your question, no, not it doesn't really change my perspective. I hope it opens up people's eyes and um, lets them see like the real problem of immigration, how immigration laws um, really like tear families apart, and um, how they can prohibit people from having a better life. Reporting from outside Missioner Library, I'm Alex Exted, Bear News. I know this is an important topic, but I just really want to hear what 21 Savage is going to say about this one on his next album because he's definitely going to drop some bars. In some, my opinion, yeah. Yep, some mm -hmm, fire definitely. lines we're going to see from him. <laughs> it was a rough weekend for UNC sports as many teams fell to tough opponents. Luckily, UNC hockey came to the rescue with a big win and some exciting news. Stay tuned. Courtney Lockie has all of the highlights and more coming up in sports. All right, give me a spot. You know my motto, safety first. They could be dangerous. I think we should call animal control. Animal control? To be safe. Don't worry. Just... I got this. It's a new motto. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Here's your check. Oh, you, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got you. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. After two big conference matches this weekend, UNC's wrestling team is still winless in the Big 12 Conference.
First, UNC took on the Utah Valley Wolverines Friday night. The Bears had a commanding lead going into halftime, winning four out of the five first matches. But the Bears ended up blowing their 17-3 lead and lost the last five matches of the night to fall by a score of 22-17. Two days later, the Bears went back out to take on number 12, the University of Wyoming. Once again, the Bears came out with the lead, going up 12-7 over the Cowboys. After losing just two days earlier, Jacob Seeley came out with a nice win over the Cowboys, Kale Davidson, who is ranked number 19. But even though the Bears gave it a good fight, they still came up short, losing 26-19. to Wrestling has just one more conference meet at home against Air Force this Sunday. Hopefully our boys can get a win on our senior night. It's a sure sign that spring isn't too far away when the baseball bats and gloves come out. The good news, the Bears baseball opened their season. The bad news, they got off on the wrong foot, being swept by UC Davis. The Bears traveled to California for a doubleheader on Saturday. They even managed to get on the board first when they scored their first run of the season with an RBI double by senior Tyler Yamaguchi to get senior Jack Pauley home. But it all went downhill from there. UC Davis went on an 11-run tear, leaving the Bears in a drought until the top of the ninth when an RBI by junior Quinn Ayers knocked in Yamaguchi. That was all the Bears could muster before the 11-2 loss. Hoping to make a comeback later in the day, the Bears hit the diamond ready to play in the second game. But UC Davis had other ideas. The Bears got on board first again, this time in the second inning with Yamaguchi, knocking in Polly before UC Davis came back to score nine runs of their own. That game ended with a 9-2 loss for the Bears. Limping into Sunday's game, the Bears seemed all but defeated, and UC Davis closed out the series with a merciless 12-run shutout to send the Bears home winless. The Bears hope to turn their season around with a four-game series in Phoenix against the University of Washington starting tonight. The UNC softball team is back from a business trip to Mexico, and while they might have added another stamp to their passports, they couldn't stamp a win for the weekend. The Bears played in the Puerto Vallarta College Tournament and had some tough competition from big schools, including the University of Arkansas and the University of Central Florida. The Bears bats went silent as they didn't score any runs in their first game against North Dakota State, losing 4-0 at the Nancy Almaraz Stadium. Bears pitchers also struggled. Starting pitcher Valerie Vidal went pitch for pitch with the NDSU pitcher until the fourth inning. And that's when the Bisons' Montana DeCamp hit a home run to left field to break the scoreless tie and take the lead for her team. The Bears didn't see any success during the rest of the weekend as they lost their next three games, 6-0 against Southern Illinois, 11-0 against the University of Arkansas, and 7-0 against UCF. They head up north from Mexico to California to play five games in the Silicon Valley Classic this weekend. Well, although they didn't come back with any wins, I hope that they had a good time in Mexico anyway. The UNC women's basketball team found themselves in a dogfight last Thursday evening with Eastern Washington, a fight that lasted until the very last buzzer sounded. The Bears went on a surge late in the game to cut the lead down to just two points. Savannah Smith made yet another big play for the Bears as she drew a charge call and set up a chance to tie the score with 37 seconds left. Smith, who had 26 points on the night behind six three-pointers, made a made, turned over the ball, and Eastern Washington went on to win by a final score of 76-72. to When Saturday afternoon rolled around, Smith was not going to let the Bears lose two in a row. The senior put up an outstanding stat line of 35 points, six assists, six steals, and three rebounds. The Bears needed every bit of her effort as they trailed by three heading into the fourth quarter. The women's team racked up a 30-point fourth quarter and sent Idaho home defeated by a final of 77-72. After the split this weekend, the ladies sit at 16-8 and eight on the year and 11-4 and in Big Sky Conference play. The Bears are off until the 25th when they take on Montana. A big congratulations to senior guard Jordan Davis. He's now the all-time leading scorer in all of Northern Colorado history with 2,131 points overall. But as Davis has made history, Eastern Washington stole the show. The Bears fell to the Eagles last Saturday, 88-78 in overtime, making the Bears 11-4 on the season. But it's not all bad. Last Thursday at Idaho, the Bears dominated the Vandals, beating them 75-47. 
The Bears forced a season-high 22 turnovers, and the Bears are now 2-0 and against the Vandals on the season. The Bears head over to Montana to tip off against the Grizzlies Monday at 7 p.m. The UNC hockey team got their automatic bid to Nationals this weekend and topped it off with a big-time win. The team got together in the locker room Thursday night to hear they earned the second spot in Nationals. Then it was ice time against the Denver Pioneers, and that was a blowout for the Bears, of course. The Bears scored early and often, scoring five goals in the first period alone. A big part of that was due to a hat trick by the Bears' Cade Boring. Colin Schmelka added two goals, while Cameron Taggart, Jay Franceschini, and Mitch Porter and Tyler Weber each added one. The Bears won their final home game 9-5, moving on to conference playoff championship game on Sunday. That didn't go the Bears' way as they lost 4-3 against the Metro State Roadrunners once again in overtime. The Bears head to Frisco, Texas for Nationals at the end of March. And a big congratulations to the hockey team for making it this far. They've been doing very fantastically in this season. Yeah, sadly they couldn't get past Metro State in the Big Mountain Conference Championship, but, you know, I'm sure they'll take Nationals as a, a, a compensation for that. Yeah, a great way to represent UNC. So that does it tonight for us. Thanks for joining us. And remember, Bear News is your source for all things UNC all the time. Good night.